we're on problem 87. It says an employee is paid 1. Point, let me write that down. 87. An employee is paid 1.5 times the regular hourly rate for each hour worked in excess of 40 hours per week. Okay, so after 40 they get overtime one and a half times, excluding Sunday, and two times the regular hourly rate for each hour worked on Sunday. How much? So each hour worked on Sunday, regardless of whether or not they're above 40 hours. How much was the employee paid last week? So how much paid? Okay, so let's see. Statement one tells us the employee's regular regular hourly rate is ten dollars. Ten dollars per hour is normal. Now, if they just so based on that, we know what their overtime is. That means that overtime overtime is one and a half times, so it's fifteen dollars an hour. And it tells us that Sunday is double that, twenty dollars an hour. All of that was said in the problem uh, description, I guess you could call it. But we still don't know how much they were paid because we don't know how many hours they worked and when those hours happened to be. So it's still not enough information. Statement number two it says last week the employee worked a total of fifty four hours, fifty four hours total, but did not work more than eight hours on any day. No more than eight hours in a day. Okay, so let's think about that. If you worked no more than eight hours in a day, how many days would you have to work? You would have to work, well, you would have to work six, you would have to work six, you'd, I guess at minimum you would have to work six days for eight hours, and one day you would work for six hours, right? Or, I mean, there's other ways you could say it. You could have seven days, all seven days you could be working for, how many times does seven go into? You could be working seven and six sevenths hours. Seven and six sevenths hours a day. Now, this still doesn't, neither of these help us because we don't know where the hours were allocated. We don't know how many of these hours ended up on Sunday because that's a critical question. And we know that there was some overtime in some form. Right? But we don't know if that was Sunday overtime or if that was regular overtime. And both of these cases would imagine working seven and six seventh hours every day. Then you would have seven and six sevenths for Monday through Friday. Then you'd get some overtime for Saturday as soon as you got above 40 hours. And then at Sunday, you'd get paid double. But then you have this situation. Maybe Sunday is the day you work six hours. Or maybe Sunday is one of the days you work eight hours. So we don't know. So at this problem, there's not enough information to solve this problem. 88. 88. What was the revenue that a theater received from the sale of 400 tickets? 400 tickets. Some of which were sold at the full price, and the remainder which were sold at reduced price. OK, fair enough. The number of tickets sold at full price, this is statement number one. So let's say, so immediately we know that there are 400 tickets sold, and that is the number of full price tickets plus reduced price tickets is equal to 400, right? Statement number one tells us, oh, and they want us to know wait, some of which were sold at full price and the remainder of which, oh, they want to know the revenue, OK. They want to know the revenue. So we have to know how much we got for each of these tickets in order to be able to figure it out. So number one, the number of tickets sold at full price, full price, were one fourth the total number of tickets sold. So one fourth times what was the total number of tickets sold? Well, they already told us that four hundred. So it equals one hundred. And then we could just look at that, and that tells us the reduced price were equal to three hundred tickets were sold at the reduced price. But that still doesn't tell us the total revenue because we don't know how much full price was or how much reduced price was. So that's not enough information just yet. Problem two says, the full price of a ticket was $25. 25 for full price. But they still don't know, we still don't know what the reduced price is. We know that 25 times 100, or $2,500, were generated from the sale of the full price ticket. But the reduced price, they don't tell us that what, how much did they reduce the price, right? Some of which were sold at full price, and the remainder of which were sold at a reduced price. We don't know what that is. It was 25% off, 50% off. We don't know. So un unless we know the price of the reduced price ticket, we can't figure this out. So once again, not enough information to solve the problem. Problem 
89. If, what is that, a circle? Circle represents one of the operations plus, minus, and times. And, OK, this is interesting. So they say, if circle represents one of the operations plus, minus, and times, is k circle L plus M equal to K circle L plus K circle M for all numbers K, L, and M. Well, essentially, what are they doing? They're, they're, they're doing the distributive property, right? They're saying that k, whatever this operation times l plus n, is the same thing as k times whatever this operation is with l plus k, whatever this operation is with m. And the only places where the distributed property works is either with multiplication or division. And division isn't one of these, these properties. So essentially, if circle, this doesn't work with addition or subtraction. So if essentially we're able to prove or disprove that multiplication is this operator, then we have enough information. So statement one is. So another way of saying it, that this circle could, that this, this question could be re rephrased as, is circle equal to multiplication? So if we can answer this with the statements, then we can answer this top one, because only multiplication works with this. Or division, but division isn't one of the options. Statement one says, k circle one is not equal to 1 circle k for some numbers k. For some numbers k. Well, this immediately tells me that this is not multiplication, right? In fact, this tells me that this is subtraction, right? Because the only time where you know k minus 1 is different than 1 minus k, with addition, that's always going, they'd always be equal to each other. With multiplication, they'd always be equal to each other. So this has to be, if you believe statement 1, then circle is subtraction, which tells you that this statement up here is not true. So statement 1 alone is sufficient to determine whether this statement is true, or another way to phrase the problem, whether circle is equal to multiplication. So statement 1 is sufficient. Statement 1 actually tells us that the circle is subtraction. Problem number two, or statement number two. Circle represents subtraction. OK, well, they just told it out right there. Well, so this and this are equivalent information. And so they're enough to determine that this up here is not true. Remember, we're not, they're not saying, is the statement true? They're saying, do you have enough information to figure it out? And we know that this isn't true because circle is subtraction. And this statement only holds true if the circle is equal to multiplication. So each statement alone is sufficient to solve that problem. Problem 90. How many of the 60 cars sold last month by a certain dealer had neither power windows nor a stereo? OK, so it tells us 60 sold. And we want to know how many had neither power windows nor a stereo. Statement 1 tells us, of the 60 sold, 20 had a stereo but not power windows. 20 had stereo, no power windows. Fair enough. But that still doesn't tell us how many had neither. So let's, let me draw a little circle Venn diagram here. OK, so that's all 60 cars that were sold. That, that pool right there, that set. 20 had stereos with no power windows. So let me draw some Venn diagram. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Uh, that sneeze that I was talking about a couple of videos ago finally happened. I feel, <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right, back to the problem. 20 had stereos with no power windows. So let, let's say that this is the pool that had stereos. This is the pool that had power windows. And what we care, actually, is what had neither stereo nor power windows. So we care about. We care about this outside. Oh, that looks tacky. That's a little garish. But anyway, so if this is stereos, this is power windows. This would be stereos and power windows. They're saying 20 had stereos but no power windows. So that's this right here. So I'll do another fill. <laughs> that's yeah, that's not pleasant to look at. But this is this is 20. 
stereo, no power window. And then, but that alone doesn't tell us what this green area is. So what's the second statement? Oh, that's too dark. Statement two tells us, of the 60 cars sold, 30 had both power windows and a stereo. 30 had both. So that tells us that this range right here, let me do it in another, in another tacky color. That tells us that that, right, that's how many had power windows and stereos. That's how many had power windows and stereos. So that is 30. Let me make sure I have a good color here. So that's 30. I know that you can't see that. 30. OK. So I mean, we could answer a couple of questions. We can answer, how many cars sold had stereos in general? Well, 50, right? 20 had a stereo, no power windows. 30 had a stereo with power windows. So a total of 50 stereos were sold. We know that. 50 had stereos. But that still doesn't answer our question. Of the 10 that remained, of the 10, you know, the 60 were total, and there's 10 left within this space and this space. We don't know how those 10 fall out. Maybe 5 had neither, and 5 had only power windows with no stereo. Or maybe there, maybe there were no cars with only power windows and uh, no stereos, and all 10 were had neither. So you don't know, even using both statements. So at least for this one, they haven't given us enough information to, to figure out how many had neither. They did give us enough information to figure out how many stereos got sold, or how many cars with stereos got sold. Anyway, see you in the next video.